Hey everyone, this is Eric with uh, Alchemy with Zero Phase, and uh, I decided I wanted to do a decent little tutorial on some of the different ways you can do upscaling. <clears throat> I've had some people ask me about that, of course. And uh, there are, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways to upscale, but there's, I think there's four, well, maybe five primary ways. Um, to do it. Uh, most, so most of you probably know the straight up, you know, just send it over to extras. Um, you know, you drop the image in here, change the resize value, choose your upscaler and upscale. Um, which is fine, you know, it gives you the, the dimensions, but um, it's not giving you the detail. So like use the 4X Ultra Sharp, it will try to add some detail. It's not the best in the world um, without doing some prior upscaling to add the detail. Um, 4X Ultra Sharp works really well with that. Uh, go through a couple of these. Uh, the Lank, Lank, uh, Lanxos. <laughs> so Lanxos and Nearest are fairly similar. Um, the differences you're going to see between this are not much. What basically what it does, it just upscales the image, trying to keep um, the image almost exactly the same as it is. It doesn't do any changes necessarily. It just gives you the resolution. 4X Ultra Sharp. We'll try to add a little bit of detail. Same with the R ESRGAN 4X Plus, which is another one I, I used to use a lot. <coughs> uh, the problem with that one is it tends to wipe out a lot of the detail, meaning it'll smear or like you get down if you zoom in on it, there's, it ends up giving it this kind of painted look. Um, you end up losing detail actually, and I might show you the difference uh, in that here as we go. So again, you, might, you probably know about the, the extras, great. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, what we're going to do is do a, a what I call the quick and dirty image to image resize. Um, and what I mean by that, let's uh, let's generate something. <clears throat> let's, uh, you know, most of you are probably uh, dealing with you know you want to do portraits, pretty girls, or whatever you know. So let's do this. Let's do a. Uh, uh, um, I don't have my. GPT up, so I'm just going to do this from the hip here. So we're just going to do a portrait photo of a beautiful um, Russian woman with long, wavy, blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, White freckles, uh, full lips, um, I don't know, uh, let's, uh, let's say, uh, smiling, get some teeth in there, I'll show you how to deal with teeth. So, I mean, the Restore Faces actually works really good with that, but it depends on your model, too. Some of the reasons I like the Illuminati Diffusion, and I know some of you have been trying to get a hold of this, I have made it available in my Google Drive share if you're interested in that. Um, <clears throat> tends to handle a lot of that. It was just such a well done model. So we're going to leave it at that. Maybe uh, white, um, white uh, blouse. I don't know if that's how you spell blouse. I think it is. Anyway, and then we'll come over here. We're just going to pick some standard lighting. My prime negative and portraits. So that's going to be a nice long negative prompt because a lot of it's, a, you know, there's some repeat in there, but it tends to uh, do a really effective job. We're going to generate two of these. I want it to be a portrait. So we're going to come over here. I have some presets under my config presets. Well, it's like portraits. It does move that up to four, but I don't know. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do four just to kind of see. We're going to leave restore faces on. I think that's fine for the initial render, but for further renders you don't you kind of want to avoid using the restore faces unless you have to in paint to get the faces corrected like if there's something wrong with the face uh, the reason why is when you leave this on and you're doing upscaling it tends to have the same effect as some of the like the um, uh, what is it the ESRGAN 4x or whatever that I said kind of smears stuff it kind of blends stuff too much I mean, it gives it too much of a fake uh, painted look so uh, I think those settings are fine. We're gonna go ahead and hit that. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down to seven. I don't want that up at eight. <clears throat> I don't hit render here. Some of the renders in this are going to take a while. I'll end up pausing the video during some of those, but 
for this particular one, we'll go ahead and just let it go. So give it a second to kind of kick in since I had to reload everything. And there we go. Oh, that's interesting that it's doing it that direction. I know they did some updates, but that's odd. <laughs> Usually it does a four by four. I had to check my settings for that. <coughs> I apologize. <coughs> I feel like I'm, I, I had a bunch of chocolate before I started this video. <laughs> and so my throat is uh, acting like it needs to be cleared up. So I'll try to keep it to a minimum. <clears throat> just about done with that one <clears throat> uh, my last video I did talk about how I like to do four in the batch size because I like to see all four images at the same time gives me a little bit of a heads up if you know it's just going to all be crap and then if I like it then I'll add some batch count to it okay so here we have some very beautiful uh, Russian women <laughs> And uh, let's take a look at some of these and see if there's something that uh, would stand out in getting some detail. Um, so uh, as you can see, the teeth are, for the most part, really well done. You got a little bit of jinkiness down at the bottom, like she chipped her teeth a little bit. Eyes are great, though. Eyebrows are great. Um, the overall aesthetic feels very natural, so that looks good. Um, striking blue eyes again teeth look great in this one uh, again I had the uh, the restore face so I don't know how much that took effect on this you can see the eyes in this one are a little odd okay what we're looking for is something that will show details we upscale it so like this in here would be great because it's got the laciness in the shirt which is really cool um, it's got a bit of an earring in here but the hair is where you're gonna see a lot of that stand out I don't like this one here you get this hair over here it looks like it's more webbing than any anything um so this one looks a little bit better let's go back to the first one i think i really let's like that one or that one i don't like how bright the background is this one's great i love the layout of this one um we get some detail on the clothing because she has a necklace um don't have to worry about ears but we're going to get a lot of detail on this one <clears throat> so we're going to send this one over to image to image and we're going to show you the straight up rescale of this one so we're not going to use any of the standard ones all we're going to do is come down here you can do this manually if you want um, I find it easier if you don't have the aspect ratio helper uh, extension get it doing something like this makes it super easy so what I want to do is I want to make it bigger I don't know if I necessarily need to double it um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to increase by 50 percent so we get up to 1152 by 1536 be a good one it's not going to take too long um, the one thing if you don't want a lot of changes in your render um, drop this down to probably about 0.4 we'll see what that looks I don't I think I don't think it'll change it too much um, and we're gonna take restore faces off because we're not changing enough of the image that we're gonna lose uh, the the layout of the face so I think just to be able to see, so we're going to go down to 3.35. So, so all we're doing is just doubling the image and dropping the denoise strength down. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to re-render. So we got it on just resize. It's going to re-render that whole image just at a larger scale. And it, and because we're re-rendering it, it will add some detail to it. So it's going to go ahead and hit that. And we're going to just pause it because this does take a little while to do. Uh, I'm going to let it get going. So, uh, I don't know, actually, it looks like it's not going to take too long. I think it's probably because I only did a 50% increase on that. All right, so let's bring that up. So, as you can see, it did add some detail. It, you know what? Hold on. Oh, that's why. Okay. I'm like, okay, so here, I'm going to show this to you. So, this is really the difference between the samplers. So, let's go back to the original image here. <clears throat> and even in this original image, you get a lot of detail. You get the wispiness of the hair. You get some threads there. Um, the face looks natural. You know, it looks very good. Uh, when you use the Euler A, and this is what happened over here. I forgot to shift it off this. You get a more painted look. It looks painted. It looks like a, an illustration. <clears throat> and we're going to also down the... the denoise strength as you can see how our hair kind of pops out like right here so we're going to redo that the dpm plus plus sd cross uh, does take a little longer i was wondering why that didn't take as long uh to do but we are going to drop that down to 0.3 because i don't want to change anything with it so we're going to generate on that again Let's see how long it takes on this one 
I know it'll take it should take a little little bit longer. Oh, not too bad. Let's see what it does. Okay. So, yeah, not bad. So again, this is just straight rendering uh, up. We're not using an upscaler. Uh, you can kind of see how it did kind of change the image, but overall it kept it, and it kept some of the wispiness. It still gives it that painted look, and it really comes down to the, the way I'm upscaling it. You're losing some of that, and it just wasn't designed to add the details. I mean, this is just one way you can do it if you're just looking for something quick and, again, quick and dirty to, to add the detail to it. Um, okay, so, you know, that's that. I, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on that. That's really all that is. You can increase the size to whatever you want, add some steps. Maybe adding some steps will allow for more detail to be added in. But honestly, this is not the best way to do it. So uh, we're going to move on to my favorite. This is one I typically use, and that's doing the, uh, the tiled diffusion with the tiled VAE. So uh, this is an extension that you want to get if you don't have it. Um, Let's see, where is it? Uh, multi, multi diffusion upscaler for automatic 1111. Okay. Um, GitHub's right there. So, I mean, really, it's, it's in the availables. So, if you just search the availables, it'll, it'll be in there. <clears throat> so, we're going to take the same image and we're going to take it back down to what it originally was here. So, on the, on the side. So, I think we just need to go down. Now, what was it? We're just going to reset it back over here. Okay, so 768 by 1024, and then um, we are going to up this a little bit to 0.4, uh, and then again, we're going to take the restore faces off. We're going to enable tile diffusion, and uh, for the initial upscale, we can leave all these settings the same. Okay, uh, successive upscales, we're going to modify these settings because you end up getting checker patterns in areas that are gradients and and which is the bane of most people it does look like she has some hair coming out from underneath there that's interesting okay anyway um distraction right so but we are going to select the upscaler which is i you always use the 4x ultra sharp on this um i've yet to find a better one maybe there is and we're going to leave the scale factor at two you can increase that but it definitely takes a lot longer to render and by doing it two gives you a chance to look at the results before moving on to a, a higher upscale. Because there may be some things that we want to in-paint on this, you know, if there's anything wrong. So um, we've got that enabled, so we're going to minimize that. We don't have to modify, modify anything else. We don't need the aspect ratio helper. And then, um, yeah, the steps are fine. I want to double check everything because it really sucks when you get in as you get halfway through a render and realize, oh crap, I forgot to modify that setting. So. And you have to stop and start all over again. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to rendering. We're going to make sure we have at least the, uh, I think the prime negative in here. We don't want any jankiness coming out of the render because we are using a 0.4, which does give it some variance to add the details. But if you don't at least give it some guidance, it will start to add a little bit of weirdness in on the smaller level. So set that to render. See how long it's going to take. I, may pa I think I may pause the video for this particular one. Getting there takes an initial uh, an initial second to load the uh, upscaler model. There we go. So uh, it's going to take it a few minutes. Probably not four or five, but it will take it a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Okay. So it's done rendering. It took it about three minutes. And uh, right off the bat, you can tell there's a little bit of change. You can see the color of her eyes is a little bit different. Let's blow that up. And as you can see, it kept and added to the texture of the hair um, and added a lot more detail to it. Uh, you notice her teeth, it actually kind of fixed the teeth a little bit. It looks a little more natural. Her eyes look a little unnatural. They're fine. They're great. I love how compelling they are. That, that blue is really bright. I would say they're, the, 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 the irises are a little off, um, but overall it's fine. It looks great. <clears throat> now, here's, here's the thing. At this point, this is where you would do some end painting. Um, one of the things I would do is fix the teeth. Yeah, I know they look fine. You can tell this is a little odd. Um, I'd probably redo the eyes as a whole. You'd mask out the uh, the eyes as a whole and re-render those. So 
Um, and I can get rid of this hair that's coming out from the seam right here. It just doesn't look natural. But if you look at this, it looks amazing. Uh, you get a lot of detail in this. And this image is, what did it go up to? 1536 by 2048, so we're at 2K now. So here's where we can take this to the next level. What we're gonna do is send this over to image to image. I'm not gonna do any in painting. I'm gonna save that for another, another tutorial because there's a lot of intuition our, 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 our artistry to in painting, getting it to work right and using the right models for it. That takes, it's gonna take a whole other video. So, so we moved it over here. <clears throat> and as you can see, it, uh, it mine's set to automatically adjust the width and height to the uh, image size that it's supposed to be at. I don't know if that really matters. Uh, again, you wanna be make sure you're on the DPM++ SDE Keras. So uh, we're gonna come down here to the denoise strength. So we're leaving these enabled. Okay, tile diffusion, we don't need to touch those. Oh, except for this. Because we are now at the higher level, we want to actually change the um, latent font tile width and height. Okay, and typically I usually move that up to 128. Okay, I find that this scale works really well. Um, and then we are going to increase the latent tile overlap, right? And I usually go up to 64. Okay, I don't know why I like base 16. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> I'm a computer guy, call me a nerd, whatever. But okay, so the denoise strength, we are going to reduce that down, okay? All we're doing is adding in micro details at this point. Um, we don't need it changing a lot. So we're gonna go to point three, it's still safe. Um, and typically this is the last upscale I will do with this because of how long it takes. Let me show you how long it's taking to take. I'll pause it, wait for it to finish, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So everything else we're gonna leave the same, hit generate. Okay, so ran into a bit of a problem here uh, with the recent update they pushed out for the uh, automatic 11.11 interface. They apparently are having some issues with upscaling past certain resolutions. So we were able to do the first upscale and typically I would do one more pushing this to 3000 by 4000, but we're not gonna be able to do that as I am getting an out of memory CUDA out of memory error. Um, I did some research, other people are having similar issues dealing with like high res fix and uh, various other aspects of that. So just to continue on with this tutorial, um, just know that we would normally push that in there. It would take it about nine minutes to do the render, nine to 10 minutes, at least on my system with the 12 gig card. Uh, and then after that, if I wanted to push it up to the 8K, I would actually, I would actually move it to the extras at this point. And let's see if we can get it over there here. Let's reload this. Okay, so we're gonna grab, I think it's this one right here, which should be, where are we here? 1536 by 2048. We're gonna push that over to extras. There we go. We're gonna leave it on four times, change the upscaler to the four times ultra sharp. Let's hope it doesn't give me the same errors here. I didn't earlier when I was doing some other stuff. So we're just gonna generate. You'll still get a very beautiful image that is printable and uh, uh, usable. So I typically like to do the, the upscale one more time with the other one. So it's at least at 4K. And then what I would do is bring it over to extras and drop this down to two times. Um, and again, just up, upscale it to the 8K. And there we go. Uh, so it does go through doing it this here. Does add a little bit of detail. Um, the eyes look great. I mean, they're, they're, they're <laughs> a little oblong. Um, but if we wanted to go into that, let's go to, uh, and let me open this up here and uh, we can zoom in on it and see what it actually looks like here. Okay. We are getting a painted look on this. I don't like that. Again, I, I think that has something to do with not being not doing that final upscale. So yeah, I'm not liking that. I'm not sure what happened there. I mean, it looks great, but we're not we're we're definitely getting a painted look. And I, I don't know if that's because we couldn't do the final upscale. So I'm going to move on to showing the the newer upscale that uh, people have started using a little bit uh, using the. Uh, um, the control net. So they have a new sampler method called tile sampler. 
Now let's see if we can do this. I've only done it a few times, so let's let's walk through this. We're going to send this image. Let's send, uh, not this one, let's send this one over, I think is the one I want. 1152 by 1536. Now let's go back to the original. Actually, I think I want to start from the beginning on this one. So let's grab, I think it's that one. No, not that one. What is the original one? That one right there. Okay, so send this over to, we're, and not to image the image this time, we're going to go to in paint. And then we're not going to mask anything out, okay? We're going to leave it on in paint mask, original, whole picture, okay? We are going to change the res on this, so we're going to go down to, we're going to leave the seed as well. We're going to go down to uh, the aspect ratio helper, we're going to add, we're going to double that up to 1536 by 2048. And then we're going to go into Control Net. We're not adding a picture here. We're going to enable it. Um, I guess we could do Pixel Perfect. That basically just ensures that it's getting the right dimensions on the resulting image or what's being used in Control Net. And now in the processor, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. So you have to make sure you're on the latest version of Control Net. Okay. There should be some at the bottom that says Tile Resample. Okay. And then over on none, or excuse me, on the model, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to uh, tiled right here, the 1.5 tile. Now, when using this, you do have to use a model that is either one, you know, if you're using a, a, a control net model that is 1.5, you've got to make sure you're using a, uh, a checkpoint model that is 1.5. So we're going to just switch this over to um, the uh, mid journey. V4 checkpoint uh, that somebody made that renders stuff very similar to the Mid Journey 4. And then uh, I think that's it. Uh, we are going to reduce this down. I think we're going to go down to uh, 0.4 on this one and take that off. And then uh, I think that's it. So theoretically, that's all we have to do. I don't think I'm forgetting anything on this. And uh, we just hit render on it or generate. <clears throat> I do remember this one taking a little while. If I need to, I'll pause it. We'll see how long it's going to take when it to come up here. Hopefully it doesn't give me an out of memory error again. There we go. Okay, so it looks like probably between four and seven minutes. So. Uh, Let's wait till it brings up the image. Okay, so it's gonna we're gonna let it render that. We're gonna pause it for a second and uh, come back. All right, we're just about to finish up here. Okay, so what it gives you is um, let me come down here. I'll show this to you. So when you do select the tile resample, it's giving you uh, an option that says downsampling rate. So what this does is it downsamples the picture first, and then it allows it. it I, my understanding is that that removes a lot of the preconceived uh, details and allows the AI to regenerate a lot of the details that are in there, hopefully adding more details as it adds uh, or increases the resolution on it. And so when we come into this uh, and we scroll between the two, you can see that one's a that one's the original resolution. And you come to this one, you can see it's a little finer. It's it, it refined the resolution, added the uh, the scale to it. Let's take a look at this. So it should be 1536 by 2048. Both of them are, one's just a downsampled version. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to say, let's bring, uh, let's see if I can grab the image here. So I think, let's see, I don't know if this is the downsample one. Uh, split between these two so that one right there this one looks like the original or at least the downscaled downsampled one and then this is the one that was uh, upscaled and it looks like it did fix a lot of the painted look so we could take this possibly into one of the other upscalers and actually Get a better result. So this is kind of one of the newer upscalers uh, that people are using to uh, 
upscale their images, it tends to, it looks like it's doing a little bit better job adding some details and getting rid of that painted look. So I don't know, we'll see how it, see how it maintains as we do the other stuff. So we're gonna send it over to image to image again. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to put this through the tile diffusion. So we're gonna try the this one again. And God, I don't know what it's gonna do if I try to do that. Let's, um, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, where is it? Uh, aspect ratio, we're gonna add 25% to the size. No, it's not gonna let me. Uh, probably because of that, let's see. No, it's not gonna let me go over the 2048 by 1536. And I think that might be a setting limitation in the control net. So maybe what we do is we try, let's disable this and just for kicks, let's go ahead and uh, send it into the tile diffusion. Let's see if it chokes on us. Again, we're gonna bring this up to 128. 64, four times ultra sharp. Now we can enable the tile diffusion. All right. Don't need that. We're gonna leave the seed there just to see what it is. Typically I remove the seed because I like having add detail, you know, gives it the option of adding detail, but let's see what this does. And we're gonna watch and see if it throws an error down here. <clears throat> it does take a little bit to spin up here and usually it's pretty quick about giving us once it does it just throws the error there's actually another interface that i'm looking at titled the same um stable diffusion web ui but it's uh, it got the ux at the end of it and um, apparently what they're saying is that they are several commits ahead of the normal automatic 11.11 interface. The problem with the automatic 11.11 interface is uh, that they are falling behind on updating. It's, it's interesting, it almost feels like the person or persons who are developing it are kind of tired of messing with it. And so, like you can see the number of issues kind of stacking up, things aren't getting resolved. The community is trying to help each other out as best they can, but this other one, it's actually gonna do it. Wow, look at that. And we are at 0.4, so this should be interesting. All right, I'm gonna pause it. Uh, anyway, so this new interface looks really slick. It's got all the same options. It's based off of Automatic 11.11, but they've done a lot of updating on it. So I may do another tutorial on that after I've had a chance to look at that and, and see if it's something worth going to. So, okay, uh, let's pause this and come back here and let's uh, see what the result is. All right, so that took several minutes uh, to finish up. And um, we probably should have turned the the, uh, uh, the denoise strength down a little bit, and I'll tell you why here. Um, if you look at the image, you can see over here her neck. You know the tendons look normal; they look natural. The problem is when you're dealing with these higher resolutions and you give it that much room to work with, you start getting things like like you can see the. Uh, uh, the checkerboard pattern, even that, and that was because I had the denoise strength up too high. I forgot to shut that down or turn it down. Um, so again, that's something you gotta be careful about. So when you're working these higher resolutions, especially going up to the, so we're going up to the 4K, so you can see here 3072 by 4096. Even with changing the uh, tile width and size to 128 and the overlap to 64, you're still getting that because the denoise strength was way too high. So I'm gonna set that back to 0.2. We're gonna re-render it uh, one more time and um, I'll pause it and then we'll come back and see, see how it looks. Sorry, one thing I totally forgot to, to do here. I'm gonna cancel that one. Um, because we're not using the control net anymore, I totally forgot to switch this back over to my Illuminati Diffusion model. Uh, we're going to switch that back over here. That could be part of the problem is we were using a different model than what was used to generate it and just what I'm used to using. So that could be why there was a huge difference there, but I'm still going to keep that down there, keep the seed, and um, re-render that. So let's run that, run that again here. 
So that's interesting. It gave me kind of one of the similar errors, errors I was giving before as where the uh, mid journey one was not. Let's come back over here. I'm going to switch this over to the Dreamlike Photo Reel and see if I get the same result. There's a little more troubleshooting than I'm used to doing in any of the videos. But again, these are some of the issues you may run into. It requires a little bit of uh, troubleshooting and, and just trying different things until you get something to work. But that narrows it down. That's something to do with uh, somebody was saying about they couldn't use anything over 512 by 512 on, the, on doing resizing. That may have something to do with the model and how some updates they did in automatic 1111. Let's see what that see what that does here. I'm still going to keep the denoise strength down. <clears throat> Let's see if that allows it to actually start rendering here. If it does, I mean, that's an obvious fix to allow me to get to the higher resolutions, but I'm totally used to doing it with the Illuminati Diffusion. So, yeah, no, same thing. Let's switch it over to Mid Journey, because Mid Journey at least worked. Maybe I just need to restart the uh, back end here to clear out any, any uh, memory issues that we're dealing with. See what that does here. Feel free to fast forward if you <laughs> feel like it. I'm just going to let it record here just to see what it does. We can bring up the interface here. Yeah, maximum recursion depth. Okay, so we're going to close that down and uh, just re reloading the interface here. Uh, not sure exactly why <coughs> it was doing that. It's interesting that it allowed me to do that initial render um, up to the 4K. And maybe that's the problem. We're not going to be able to get it to go to the uh, um, the next level based on what we we have set here. But it did do it the first time. So again, let's let's give it another try here. I'm going to go back to Illuminati Diffusion here. Okay, let's try it one more time here before switching back over to um, Mid Journey. like it's doing it yeah there we go okay good weird that they must have some sort of like memory allocation issue going on with this newer version uh, reloading the interface seemed to have helped let's see what it does here it looks like it's gonna do it but it could just possibly error out on me no looks like it's gonna do it so let's give it a second here to see how long and then we'll pause the video and come back probably between four and six minutes so we'll pause this and come back okay so yeah I finished took several minutes um, and this result is uh, quite a bit better than the other one um, we did retain a lot of the detail in the hair um, and uh, there's still like if you let me pull up the image from the, from the file system here uh, because there still is a little bit of the painting effect when you get in there on it um, and you, but it did retain a lot of the details in the eyebrows um, and added some you know threading to the hair so it doesn't look as painted. Now, here's one of the things you gotta remember. When you're doing, working on a piece of artwork like this, if you're just doing straight upscaling, you're gonna get some of that painted look. You know, if you get zoomed in here, and honestly, if you, if you paint, if you're gonna print this off, most of it, you, you, you never run into seeing that. It'll just look like normal. I mean, the resolution of printers aren't gonna be a problem, but, the way you fix that is after the first upscale, you take it into inpainting, you start inpainting stuff, which will add detail, it'll add texture to the lips and the skin and everything else. I think there's some other ways we can do upscaling that will allow that. That's the multi diffusion that we weren't able to do before. Typically, I would be able to do that with that. So I'm a little, uh, I'm going to play around with that and see what I can figure out. But I hope uh, this brought a little bit of awareness on the different ways of inpainting. Especially with this new way, this uh, tiled sampler um, that uh, is now available through ControlNet. Uh, I'm going to be playing around with it quite a bit more. Love to see, you know, uh, what those results look like. If uh, somebody has maybe a suggestion or anything, put it down in the comments. 
but I'm going to call it good. Um, and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe. Um, really want to try and push this channel. I, I, I really like the community that's starting to build up around it. I uh, love the questions I'm getting, and I'm trying to be as responsive as I can through those. And so, uh, love you guys. Hope you uh, have a good evening, and we'll talk to you later.